Um, I know I start a lot of videos saying this. I wasn't going to video this guitar. Um, let, me, let me give you a little backstory here. I'm sorry I'm eating a little biscuit thing here. Biscuit. It's, uh, I don't know, some kind of fig bar thing. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, uh, a week ago, I was looking at YouTube and some, one of the guys I sub to, was replacing tuners on a on a blue Epi hundred dollar guitar, and he proceeds to drill a half inch hole for a ten millimeter tuner, right, to enlarge the holes. And not only that, but I mean, he just jams a uh, this isn't even a half inch bit. He just jams a half inch bit into the thing, you know. So you got chip out and all that, you know, just very very careless and reckless and all that. So. I just, you know, I could have just unsubbed, you know, and said nothing, but I just said, I, you know, even, even if something's just in fun, you know, you don't want to just tear up a guitar. I mean, a $100 guitar is playable, uh, you know, about 30 minutes in my shop and the thing would have been a dream. And um, he just, he just reams these holes out and, you know, I just, I can't watch this and I'm going to unsub. So that's what I did. And so I get, <clears throat> comments mostly supportive of what I said yeah that's really ridiculous to do that to a guitar you know and then I the last comment I got on it was along the lines of uh, <clears throat> excuse me along the lines of you know well and among other things it's just a guitar it, you know, I'm sorry <laughs> you know I spent the last better part of uh, 20 years you know trying to figure out ways to salvage, you know, any and every guitar that comes across my bench to be, to play as good as it possibly can play, to, to live as long a life as possible, and to see some guy just goober at it just was too much. So anyway, I'm done with that. Um, it's, I'm not done with that. It's never just a guitar. It's, you know, it could be a really special instrument to somebody if you took care of it and you fixed it correctly and uh, even a hundred dollar guitar you know if you if you take care of it you set it up um, I just I just set up a guitar for a guy that was taking it over to the Philippines to give to some some lady over there that's a uh, actually gigging musician but uh, can't afford to buy an electric guitar and it was a really low-end Strat copy, but I, you know, I worked on it, and it's it's a sweetheart now. So she's going to have a really nice guitar, and yeah, less than a hundred-dollar guitar. And uh, so, you know, if you don't think any more about an instrument than that, you know, somebody in this world would really appreciate that instrument, but not when he gets done with it. So, all right, now I am done with that. Let's see. All right. So here we go into this deal. <clears throat> Let me, uh, I'm sorry, I'm in this chair again. I left my, okay, well, I'm gonna be using it. So, this guitar is in the shop just before, sh it's a, uh, an Alvarez Yari baritone acoustic guitar. It's a really nice guitar. It's right there. And, um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So, a pretty guitar. You can't really see. Maybe I'll hold it up for you. Can you see that? Look at that. That's <laughs> I got this fig bar in my mouth. Kind of hard to talk about that. It's a. Uh, it's got some really interesting grain, unfortunately. Because of where I am in the light, you're not really seeing that. I'm back into here. Look at, look at that. That's that's pretty cool. You know, I did also take some video with my phone of the inside, and it doesn't really do that on the inside. So I'm guessing that the sides are laminate, which is okay. Um, with me, 
and the back is not in a very good place to get a good shot of this guitar. Anyway, it just has a high fret at the body joint. Uh, 14th fret was high, so I've just been working on that. And as always, when I have a guitar in the shop, let's back this out. I um, I like to check and make sure the tuners are are you know t snug and you know all that good stuff and everything's working right. So. I need to stop eating and talking. Anyway, so I uh, I grabbed these tuners, you know, as I'm taking the strings off because the guy that owned it had strung them, had wound them up the pegs instead of down the pegs, so I'm taking them off so I can restring them the other way. And then also get my wrench on here to snug these things up. So I start snugging this one up, and it's got all this bobble in it, you know, and these, now I haven't touched any of these. It's got, I don't, can you see how far? That's wobbling. Anyway, I mean that's got a nut in the in the hole, and it's got a screw in the back, and it's I mean yeah it's loose, but it shouldn't have it shouldn't have that kind of room to wobble. And this is what got me on the rant about the uh, the other guy jacking half inch holes through the thing. So here let's do this real quick. So I've got my uh, my digital caliper here. I measured. I measured the uh, the bottom of the peg. I should put this up in the bottom of the peg or tuner tuning machine is 390, and it tapers up to something like 374. So um, what does that work out to? Seven, 17, 16, 17 thousandths of taper. That's the size we're shooting for is the bottom of the taper, the largest part. So 390. So 390, and um, what I mentioned in that video, in fact, was that 390 was 10 millimeter in essence. And I didn't have a chart to look at, but I, I found, uh, I couldn't find my little chart I use typically. It's just a drill chart. I found my uh, little uh, pocket reference book. It's got all kinds of neat info in it. So I'm looking down the list here in the millimeters and the thousands. So you get to 390 and that's just, I mean, a thousandths of fuzz. It's, a, it's not even a half a thousandths smaller than 25 sixty fourths. And uh, 25 sixty fourths would be a good conversion drill bit to use as a 10 millimeter drill bit if you don't have one. Um, I don't, I'll swing this over here so that we're we're talking okay so and then if you go if you go all the way up to uh, to where it actually says 10 millimeter in this you're only talking about three thousandths of, a, of an inch difference three thousandths difference it's 393 to go from that 390 which is the base the base of the tuner shaft to a 10 millimeter hole, so 3 thousandths difference. So, and then the other thing is when you drill a hole, for instance, the uh, 25 60 fourths is not uh, at 10 millimeters, it's actually two and a half thousand, or yeah, two and a half thousand smaller than that. Um, and this isn't the right size bit either, but no, that's 13, 30 seconds. It's actually bigger, quite a bit bigger. Um, so, when you drill a hole out with a regular twist bit, you do actually wobble a little bit. And so the hole will actually be a fuzz bigger. And so, hitting a uh, hitting the hole for this with a 10 millimeter drill bit or the uh, 25 60 fourths, it's going to give you the right size hole. And if it's a little snug, you put a little file or a teeny dowel with some sandpaper you know, a little ream, something. You don't you don't purposely drill the thing over, you know, to a half an inch. I mean the other guy in the video he went past seven sixteenths even, right? You know, seven sixteenths would be a huge leap from from the uh twenty five sixty fourths and um uh, and went all the way to the half so it's big big hole, huge sloppy hole. So what I'm doing now is I'm just checking this hole to find out 
how big it is because it's bigger than it's bigger than our uh, our hole here. Now this now I just reached this out of my drill index, and this is actually are you can you see this? I can't tell on my little screen here where you're at. There you are. Yeah, it's, so this uh, this this is actually all is going into this hole, right? So this peg head, this is factory, by the way, and there's no extra holes in the back. I don't think anybody replaced these tuners along the way here. And so this drill bit goes right into this hole, and that was just a fluke, total luck, because I brought a three eighths over, which is smaller than ten millimeter and would have had to been reamed out. And I grabbed that one. <coughs> so this this bit. At 13 30 seconds, I'm going to mic it. So we're at four. Um, I'm in I'm in thousands here, so we're looking at uh, 404 .404, and we were down at 390, right? So we're only talking what we needed for this tuner at 390, and we're only at uh, 403 and a half, 404. So that's, I mean, we're talking 14, no, 40, so, and then 0, 4. So, uh, yeah, we're looking at 10 thousandths of an inch, really, variation. So 10 thousandths of an inch makes this tuner that, that much too loose, that much wobble and slop in that tuner for 10 thousandths of an inch, okay? And so this clown drilled it out at half an inch and that's five point five zero right fifty for a half an inch so and if that's supposed to be at 390 that's a whole hundred and ten thousandths um, unless I don't know how to add which is very possible double checking myself here so if you go down here 390 okay 394 there so and then you go completely all the way out yeah so, 100 thousandths difference, or 110 thousandths difference, bigger than it needed to be on that guy's channel. Uh, anyway, I, I'm, I'm kind of appalled even at this. Uh, the Alvarez brand and the Yari, um, Yari, uh, you know, Craftsman, um, he's like their, um, Kazao, Yari, he's like their, um, master builder guy that would pull guitars off the line and uh, and do all the you know detail work and everything on them and then they'd sell them with his name on them um, anyway that that's I mean to me that's a big deal the ten thousands even but a hundred and ten is just crazy so I just um, like I said wasn't planning on doing a video and there you are so now that I've got all the strings off this thing, I'm going to tighten these up, tighten the screws, screws up, and it'll be better. But I mean, it's still, um, you know, I might, I might actually run a little band of uh, masking tape around that, just, just to solid that up a little bit, and uh, or uh, assembly tape. That's what I'll do. I'll do a wrap around it with assembly tape and uh, snug that up. So anyway. Um, hey, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. We've still got lots of the gecko to do. Uh, y you know, I, I, I just think that uh, carving and showing every bit of it, even even fast forwarding through the neck carving and the sanding and all, and it's still, I've only got two into the neck process and I'm going to be another video into that. And I appreciate you guys sticking it out because it's boring, but if you're, uh, you know, if you're building a guitar and you've never carved a neck, I hope that it's helping you out. And uh, thanks once again. Uh, we'll catch you later. Take care. Just a little bit more footage on the baritone Alvarez. I uh, just wanted you to see the what this looks like. And like I said, uh, I don't. It's probably a laminate, but still, it just looks pretty, pretty cool.
uh, really nice. Uh, I particularly like this this wild grain along here where it changes you know pattern and color drastically and it's probably uh, I mean <clears throat> unless you're a guitar freak or a wood freak like I am you know you probably get that and think oh that's not a very good piece of wood it really changes drastically right there but uh, that color and and wild grain just looks My skin was cracked and dry, but Blue Star ointment fixed it all. <laughs>